Hi, my name is Matthew Hammer. I'm a cellular imaging application scientist here at Molecular Devices. And today in this video, we're going to be covering the installation as well as the use of your Image Express Pico environmental control system, which is fully integrated to control temperature, humidity, CO2, as well as O2, permitting users to perform multi-day live cell time-lapse experiments. Before we get started on in the installation process, I do want to mention that it is important to have your instrument off, which you can tell by the power button down here at the bottom of the instrument. If it is amber, then you know it is off. Now we can turn our attention towards the back of the instrument, where we will be installing the environmental control components. First, you'll want to remove the environmental control tray, as well as the humidifying column from the packaging. Here's the environmental control tray. and the humidifying column. Then we'll unscrew the top of the environmental control tray so that we can then align it with the ports on the back of the instrument. You'll want to align the environmental control tray where the outer leftmost part of the connecting portion aligns with the CO2 in port on the back of the instrument. Then slide the environmental control tray underneath the Image Express Pico until you can no longer see the silver connection portion. Insert the humidifying column into the environmental control tray. Now with the environmental control tray open, we can see that the tubing as well as the ports on the humidifying column and on the side of the instrument are all color coded to ensure the simple installation of your environmental control hardware. First, we'll take the electronics cable and align the red dot with the red dot and the port on the humidifying column. Then we can just slide the cable in. Next, we'll take the blue tubing that has this blue label on it and connect it to the appropriate port. And we'll repeat this procedure with the tubing with the red label. To finish setting up the humidifying column, connect the other end of the electronics cable and the additional three small tubes to their corresponding ports. First, we'll align the red dot on the electronics cable, once again with the red dot on the port in the back of the instrument and slide in. Next, we can insert the tubing with the white band one into the out white one port on the back of the instrument. This takes the dry mix gas from the internal gas mixer inside the instrument to the humidifying column. Then we'll plug in the yellow two tubing and plug that into the out yellow two port. And this tubing is used to send mixed gas to the humidifying column in order to throttle the humidity. The last tubing is the red three tube, which will plug in to the humidity in three port, which will take the humidified mixed gas into the environmental control cassette. The next portion of this video is gonna cover the steps necessary for connecting the gas cylinders to the instrument. But before speaking on this, I'd like to mention that all of the gases that are gonna be used in your system must be oil-free and at least 99% pure. Prior to setting up your gas cylinders, you need to ensure that you have the appropriate regulator. The one I'm showing here is a two-stage regulator that can step down the pressure to the instrument at one bar. You want a range of 0.8 to 1.2 bars, but one bar is the ideal setting. The pressurized CO2 cylinder requires a CGA320 regulator with a 13 16th of an inch fitting, as you can see here. A typical gas regulator outputs to a 1 quarter inch NPT fitting, which you can see right here. And this fitting can be either male or female. In this example, we have a female fitting. If your regulator requires outputs to a male fitting, Connect a 1 quarter inch by 1 quarter inch NPT female to female fitting to the regulator output on this end. 
But since once again, we have a female fitting, we're gonna go ahead and attach our one quarter inch MPT male to six millimeter OD push to connect fitting, which we can see here. I use Teflon tape in order to ensure that the fittings have a tight seal when I put on the regulator. Additionally, you will want to confirm that the O-ring on the CO2 tank is present and in good condition to ensure a leak-free connection. Next, I'll connect the regulator to the gas cylinder. Ensuring that the fitting is aligned straight on the gas cylinder. And I'll finish securing with a wrench. Next, I'm gonna to wanna to put on the push to connect fitting to the regulator output. And once again, this has Teflon tape on it as well. And then I'll just screw it in in place. Next, you'll wanna find your blue polyurethane tubing, which you will connect to the push to connect fitting on the regulator before turning on the environmental control sensors within the software. You'll want to turn on your gas cylinders and have them set to one bar. Regulating the pressure regulator to one bar is a critical step before connecting your blue tubing to the instrument. If the pressure has not been reduced to one bar, you may have a pressure wave shock at the backside of the instrument. Once you have verified that the regulator is set to one bar, you can close the gas cylinder, grab your polyurethane tubing, and then attach to the CO2 in port on the back of your instrument. As you can see on the back of the instrument, the three gas ports have blind plugs in them to seal off the ports. We will remove the blind plug from the CO2 in port. And since it is a push to connect fitting, you will push in on the blue and pull on the blind plug to remove. Now I can connect my tubing from my CO2 gas cylinder to the instrument. You will want to repeat these affirmation steps with the additional gases that you wish to regulate. Compressed air, which is required to run environmental control, can be either provided through a cylinder, a lab gas line, or an oil-free air pump or compressor. In our lab, we are using a lab air gas line. Regardless, a 15 sixteenth of an inch fitting is required for compressed air. Now I'm gonna connect the tubing to the push to connect fitting on the end of the lab gas airline, and I'll plug in the other end into the compressed air port on the back of the instrument. If you want to regulate oxygen throughout your live cell experiments, then you will need a nitrogen gas supply. The nitrogen cylinder requires a CGA 580 regulator with a 15 16th of an inch fitting and you will also need to add your push to connect fitting to the regulator output. Now, just like the steps that we showed for the CO2 tank and regulator, we are gonna connect this regulator to our nitrogen tank in the same manner. And now I'll just connect my nitrogen tubing to the night and two port in the back of the instrument. Before moving on, it is critical to mention that if you do not wish to regulate either CO2 or O2, that you remove the tubing from the corresponding port and instead replace it with the blind plug. If the tubing is not replaced with the blind plug, then the system will be unable to maintain adequate environmental control settings. Once all the tubing has been connected, you'll want to screw the top of the environmental control tray in place. So I'll push down the gas tubing into the slits on the side of the environmental control tray, which allows me to easily slide the top of the tray on and screw it in place. Then proceed to filling up the humidity column. You wanna remove the rubber stopper from the top of the humidity column and you also want to ensure that you have 18 mega ohm resistance water when filling up the column. 
Furthermore, using a bottle with a long neck will help to ensure that you do not get any water into the tubing in the humidity column. If you do get water into the tubing, then you will have to run an air dry maintenance. When I go to fill the column, I'm gonna insert the neck of the bottle and ensure that I fill along the side of the tube. As you can see in the humidity column, there's a central tube that contains two red markers on them, the minimum line and the maximum fill line. You will wanna fill the humidity column to the red maximum indicator line, which is approximately two thirds full of the column, and do not fill past this line. At the red maximum indicator, the humidifying column holds 130 mils of water. And once full, the humidifying column can regulate humidity for up to 72 hours straight before the need to refill. It is essential that you do not run the humidity control if the water level is below the minimum indicator line, as this can damage the instrument and humidifying column. The final piece of hardware that we'll have to place into the system is the environmental control cassette. It is a magnetically sealed glass enclosure that the gases and humidified air is pumped into. This allows for tight regulation of environmental control at the plate level, instead of having to flood your entire system with gas or humidified air. To install this, we're gonna open the plate door and we wanna align A1 with the A1 position in the stage. When I insert the EC cassette, I'm gonna insert at an angle matching A1 to A1, and I'm gonna slide it in place and push down. Once the EC cassette is in place on the stage, I'm gonna insert my plate by first lifting the lid off of the EC cassette, inserting my plate, and ensuring that it is flat. Place the lid back on, so that I can turn on the instrument and get ready for running my experiment. Well, thank you for taking the time to view this video. If you need any additional information about the Image Express Pico, please visit our website, moleculardevices.com.